And then we went thrifting, and I got a new dress. <laughs> it was fun, 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 fun. Hi, princess. <laughs> um, what do I want? First day of fall, so it doesn't feel like it, but it is. We're gonna cool off soon, I'm sure. But I love it. I love this weather. Um, I'm, I'm coming up this uh, today. Flag football at 2:30. Um, come out and support that, and have fun in the heat. Uh, tonight, 7 o'clock, Bibles for Dummies with Pastor Mark. Um, coming up this week, the 23rd, 7 o'clock, is the World Events Meeting with Paul Poulins. And the 24th is the Woman's Bible Study, 6.30. Um, and then Trish Blessing, I said blank in last service. <laughs> Blessing, uh, starting up a um, married couples Bible study. That'll be at LifeNet once a month. Um, so on the 29th is when it starts, 5.30, and that's a carry-in. So if you have um, any questions, just talk to Trish over here. And um, next Sunday is the Children's Fall Carnival. So kids, it's both service. Oh, where's, oh, she didn't come down anyway. Danielle's supposed to talk about that, but she is somewhere else, so I'll talk about it. Um, there's going to be lots and lots of games. I think she had something like 50, over 50 games and activities, prizes, um, snack, and so that'll be fun. That's first, second service, 9 and 11 o'clock. And then the Run with Heart, that's on October 12th, but today's the last day to register for that. So if you have questions with that, you can talk to Lisa Blake about it. Um, I had a, a picture in here that you could scan it, but I had to make it small <laughs> this week, so I don't think you'll be able to scan it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, questions to, to Lisa Blake, and probably Trish can answer some questions too, and she's here, so. Okay, let's pray and get started. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for, for giving us this building so we had an opportunity to come and, and learn about you, Lord, and worship you together, Father. That's, that's such a blessing to me to worship with my church family. Um, Father, bless our offering today, Father, and just invade our worship that it is blessing to you. Precious name, amen. Because he healed my heart and changed my name. 
up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Did you know she could sing like that? She does pretty good. Let's give the Lord some praise. Okay. 
within you. And, uh, you know, I, I used to be a nurse and I used to work hospice and stuff. And I w I've seen several people take their last breath. And I always thought, Lord, with my last breath, I pray that I am worshiping you, that I am praising you with that very last one. So uh, be a person of praise. What are you building your life on? What are you building your life on? Is it your kids? I love my kids. But they'll let me down sometimes. Is it your hubby or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend? They'll let you down sometimes. And they're all good things, good, good things, blessings. But we've got to be building on Jesus. We've got to be building on Jesus. Let's lift him up. Christ is my firm foundation. Stand on him. The rock on which I stand.
Do you ever remember? Do you ever remember like times that you just cried out to the Lord and he's shown up? Oh, I have a list. I have a list. But there's some highlighted ones in my life. Boy, there's some highlighted ones in my life that when I remember, I think about it. I'm like, if he's di he did that then, I can call up on him now. Yesterday I had the privilege of coming in and uh, praying, and I, uh, I just uh, barged in. I didn't have a time, but I made a time. And I got to come in here with two beautiful ladies. I noticed them. And I got to spend more time with the, the one, and I was just like, she challenged me so much. She just prayed. And I was like, man, this l gal knows how to pray. This gal knows how to pray. And I thought, she's had some hard times in her life, and she's had no choice but to call upon the Lord. And uh, I want to be a person that when hard times come, I choose to stand on Jesus. That I choose to call upon his name. I choose to humble myself before him and acknowledge him as God, and I am not, and he's in control. Uh, and then I look at stories in the Bible. And you know what? We're going to sing a song about all kinds of stories in the Bible. And they called upon the name of the Lord and miraculous happened. And did God change? No, he has not changed. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So you call upon his name. He's the same God. He does not change. He does not waver. And he is faithful and he is good. Let's sing about that. Call upon his name.
been busy even working for God and you just poured out and you poured out and you needed just more of the Holy Spirit to give you what you need maybe you've stumbled maybe you've walked away maybe you just can't get it right sometimes I know that feeling Lord I want to do right but my flesh rises up and then I know I need to be filled Holy Spirit, come and fill me with your presence. Lord, I pray you empty me of myself and fill me. Come and fill us, Lord. Come and fill us. We have to do it over. We have to do it daily. Ask him. Fill me with your, who you are and your presence. It can't just be a one and done thing. 
It's a living relationship between the Almighty God. It's not just a church camp. It's not just a Sunday morning. It's not just when I was younger. It's a daily feeling. It's a daily surrendering to God that I have to do it. I want to do. I want to do it, Lord. Lord, fill us with your presence. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us, Lord, with more of you. Because, Lord, when we have you, we have your peace. We have your hope. We have your joy. We have your strength. We have your power. Lord, it's not about us, but it's by your spirit. Lord, I pray for this, that you will just move as the word of God is brought. Move in our lives this week. Move in our lives. Let us not just do the same things we always do, but Lord, you direct our paths. You direct our days. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. How you doing? Everybody okay? You doing all right? That was good. Wasn't that good? That was good. We need that. Don't we need that? Glad you're all here this morning. Glad you woke up, took a shower. Most of you put on a smile, came to church. Glad you came today. You hot too, sis. I'm hot too. There's a blower up there that might help me some, if you'll let me. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. There's, yeah, there's so many remotes around here, you can't even. That's it. Good morning. Good to see everybody. Thanks for coming to church today. We're glad you're here. I'm kind of a nut. I, I, uh, I tried everything I could possibly do to not pastor a church. I was telling the Lord, no, Lord, no, 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 no. And I've never loved anything more than, than and it's because it's a great church. The folks are great. What God called us to is amazing. And we're so glad you're here today. Thanks for coming. I don't know how to express my gratitude more than that. You know, just thank you for being part of who we are and what we get to do. I, I you know, I make these jokes about in heaven, we're all going to live close together. Right? And I think that's probably true. I do, I do with a bunch of Peruvians. Right? A whole bunch of Peruvians. And... Uh, we're going to love it. We're going to just have a blast together. That might not be that far away. Might not be that far away. At the last trump. Never mind. Let's go. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We love you with all of our heart. God, we just come as an empty canvas today. A, a blank slate. Not trying to assume, Lord, just really, really, really trust in the Holy Spirit to lead us today. And whatever, wherever, I pray, God, that you speak to us. We need you so. Worship time was really good. Pray, Lord, that we feed off of that, Lord, and your spirit just ministers to people today. Pray, God, that you speak words of life, love and life and healing over all of our troubles and over all our worries. Lord, let the word of God accomplish what it must today in us. We came today. You made disappointment, Lord. Let it speak and heal and deliver us from all the troubles we have. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 
1 Peter is where we're at today. I could take a lot of time to, to go back and preach uh, chapter 1, because I love tying stuff together, but we just don't have time for that. So we're just going to jump the first verse here. And, and it isn't, I don't want to say that it isn't, um, Peter's getting after us. Let me say it that way. He's just very direct, very boom, okay? Um, just in my studies in Peter, Peter's not a guy that messes around. You know, Peter was pretty black and white. He, he would open his mouth bad wrong, and he would open his mouth bad right. At this point, he's an old man in jail trying to write to the church, trying to just say, hey, come on, come on. If you're going to serve the Lord, let's serve him, right? Don't, none of this one foot in, one foot out, do the hokey pokey. Get in, serve the Lord with all that you are. So he begins here with just some hard words. I am a guy that likes to sit down in the scripture. I don't bounce around from book to book to book to book. I like to sit down in the scripture and preach to you just in a straight fashion, you know. And uh, well, he's hard on us. Peter's hard on us here a little bit today. So, therefore, lay aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. What's the word that appears there three times? All. Does all mean some? So, therefore... You wonderful, amazing Christians, you amazing people, church, the church that ought to be on the cover of America Church magazine, right? Just amazing church here. Therefore, since, since God called you, since you're amazing, since you know how wonderful it is to live in Christ, lay aside all malice. What, what, what's malice? What, what's malice? Malice is like getting back at, thinking evil thoughts, trying to get even, right? So I, I don't think there's anybody. Maybe I shouldn't even preach this verse because I think we got pretty much a perfect church here, Bill, perfect church. Nobody here has any malice, right? Right? Nobody. Lay aside all malice, all deceit, in meaning anything not truthful, hiding anything. Hypocrisy. You know what hypocrisy is, right? Doing one thing, saying another, saying one thing, doing another. Envy. You're worried about the other guy. You know, I... That social media thing's got everybody looking at everybody, and everybody... You're you. It's okay to be you, right? It's perfectly cool to be you God loves you God gave you a fingerprint that was uniquely you so much about what God wants you to know is you're unique don't worry about everybody else that, that makes sense so why would you care so and so got a new car rejoice right I'm happy right all that stuff I, I'm, I'm me Every person has their struggles. Every person has their pain. Everybody has their, it's common to man. What I've learned pastoring people is that a lot of people think their circumstances are unique. But when you pastor as long as I pastor, what happens is you realize, you know, marriage trouble, for the most part, is marriage trouble. And men have the same problem with women in general. And women have the same problem with men in general. You know what I mean? Everybody thinks their stuff's unique, right? But uh, the Bible talks about people have things in common. And uh, at this point, I don't need really somebody's big, long story about their situation because I already know it's common, right? So I can stand on the platform and say, hey, we all have these struggles. We all have some successes. We all have this. We all have that, you know? There's moments that are good. There's moments that are hard. Just live your lane. Live in your lane. Live. I'm, I'm me, Right? trying to be the best me for the Lord I can be right and all evil speaking so sometimes what a pastor does is this he says well you know just try to get better just try to get a little you know if you mess up just ask the Lord forgive you and let's keep going you know and but but Peter when he says this he's saying 
And all evil speaks. So he's just saying, boom. And I pray today, I, in the scripture, when major things would happen in the Old Testament, they would put a stone. They would, or build an altar a lot of times, you know. And, and I, I would love to be able to say, you know, that when, when we read this verse, that it, it does something to us to say, hey, we're going to trash stuff that we don't need in our life. So much to the point, I don't know if you've got there, but I've certainly had to get there. Lord, I'm promising you today, I'm done with that. I've had to say with things I worry about. Lord, I promise you today, I'm done worrying about that, right? I, I, my children, God, I give you my kids, right? Lord, my problems, I give you my problems. Lord, I'm trying to serve you with all my heart. Lord, I give you my bills, right? And there's moments in my life where I just have to place a stone. There's moments where I have to go back and say, on that day, I gave up that thing. I uh, used to be able to walk down the road to a culvert. It was a big rectangular concrete culvert. And I could take chalk and I could write on that inside that culvert. Nobody would ever go down there but me. I'm the only person weird enough to go in a culvert. Up under the road, I could go in there and I'd write all the things. I sometimes would say, I, you know, I'd list stuff like... Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'd list prayer requests, things I was going to pray for, and then I'd list things I was going to, Lord, I'm done with this, I'm done with this, I'm done with this kind of thinking. Lord, I trust you. I, I give you all. So I could go back in that culvert. I'd go there every day or two, and I'd go back in that culvert and look at it again and say, God, I commit myself again. I didn't lay a stone, but I wrote it on a, on a concrete wall and said, Lord, I'm done. That helped me so much just to be done with a bunch of stuff that, my, my old nature wanted to let hang around. And your old nature will let things hang around until you say, my old nature doesn't belong here anymore. That old man doesn't live in this house anymore, right? Nope. So I, I pray today as we talk to you, if you see some of these things, you know, the scripture is here to challenge us. Peter's coming right at us. Get rid of that stuff. Get rid of it. I... There are television shows. I'm not watching that anymore. Nope. Done. Not going to do that anymore. You know what I mean? Just things, you know. Nope, 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 nope. Here's the line. I think I've talked to you about making those lines. That I'm laying aside. I'm, I'm not crossing that. that. That's bad for me. That's not where God wants me to live. There's things for me God's convicted me of personally that he wouldn't convict you of. When, uh, when we first started the church, I had a backhoe and a bulldozer and a, and a dump truck. And, and on the weekends, I could do, I was raised by an excavator and, and we could make a lot of money just on the weekends working, you know. And I was a young guy and we were trying to put a house together and a family together and that stuff. And, and God was calling me to do ministry. But I, there were times I had to leave church right after church, go to a job that I had to get finished on a Sunday, right? And I was sometimes having to preach on Sunday nights and try to get back to church. There were times I had to call somebody and say, hey, I'm not going to make it. Can you fill in? And the Lord just kept saying, what are you doing? you got to lay aside some stuff, Mark. You can't be everything. You can't. So I just came to a place in my life where I had to draw a line and say, even though that's not evil for most people, it was evil for me. It was not what I could do anymore. God... God was, it was a competing thing in my life with God. Does that make sense? So I had to lay it aside. There's all kinds of decisions you have to make about things you've got to lay aside. As newborn babes desire pure milk of the word. Okay. That you may grow thereby. Do you know if you get in the Word of God, you're going to grow? You're a product of what you feed yourself. Years ago, I went to a conference, and, and a man, was he was trying to sell something to a bunch of pastors, and they had a free meal with it and some, some, some gifts they would give you, but they were trying to sell these audio, like CDs that people could put in their car that had the whole Bible on them and commentary on them. And they were trying to say, listen, we're living in a new age now. They're CD players in cars. 
And you need to start telling your church that they don't have to listen to country music in their cars anymore. They can listen to the Word of God. That I can speak in my phone, you know, and often I do coming in this morning. First uh, Peter, read to me, First Peter chapter 2. I can even tell it what version. I'd like to have it in, which, what do they speak in China? Man, Mandarin. First uh, Peter chapter 2 in Mandarin, please. I'm just saying, the Word of God's so available to us. You know, for some of us, we're busy. We're, you know what I mean? I always tell people, keep a devotional book by the toilet. You know, at least you can get... Never mind. Anyhow. But my, my point is, the Word of God, hey, if you desire, the word desires in this, and I, I think desire is a powerful word. If you desire, as newborn baby, I think I got a baby up there that looks pretty excited about that bottle, right? And that's kind of the understanding I take out of this, say, hey, if I desire this milk, I'm going to grow. If I don't, what happens? I don't grow. Right? It's just really that simple. Everything good that's ever happened to me in the last, well, I'm 60 now. I can see the end of the rainbow from here. That's my new saying at 60. I see, forget it. Uh, every good thing that's ever happened to me, hey, is because I've grown up in the Lord. I could stay me, but I have this expectation for myself that I'm going to grow. I, I don't know if you have that for you, but you ought to, because the Lord's offering it to you here by you getting in the Word. Does that make sense? If you get in the Word and you'll desire God, God will reveal Himself to you through His Word. Truth is very powerful to destroy all the lies you're living in. Truth is very, very powerful, hey, to take you in the right direction. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. You ever get in a car without a map? You ever, listen, Lord, I give my life to you, but I, I'm not going to really invest in time in, Lord, growing. So I'm just going to live every day uh, guessing. I'm just going to let circumstance. I don't believe in all that. I believe God has an order and a direction. But sometimes we just miss God. And we miss the growing, that the good. Gro if God's good, what's he going to put in your life? Good, right? So the more I invest in God, I always say this at marriage time when we marry people. You have an opportunity now. Hey, you're in this relationship. You have an opportunity now to really grow in this marriage. But it all depends on the investment you want to make in it, right? You can ignore your spouse. You can be busy all the time. You can have other priorities. You can be doing this and that and the other. You know what I mean? And you're not making an investment in this, then that relationship doesn't grow. In fact, at times it, it gets uh, overtaken by your other priorities. Right? But you have this uh, opportunity now in this relationship with God to invest and grow. You see that? But the word desire is there. Desire. I always like to make a joke about, you know, my wife someplace right now thinking about this hunk of, hunk of burning flame, burning love right here. That she's got, she's got this burning desire for this guy right here. It's a joke, but I'm just saying. you got to have a desire. You understand that? you got to want to. And if your want to is broken, I think Deb's eating a pizza roll right in front of, or, or, or pumpkin roll right in front of me. That's so... You're trying to get me back for all the stuff I've said, aren't you? You're trying to get me back. You're back there just licking your... You're, she's eating this pumpkin roll going... I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Go right ahead. Distract me all morning. Desire! I desire to finish that. You, get, you guys get what I'm saying? Hey, desire means you're, you want to. You're going after it, Right? So there's got to be this desire as a newborn baby wants this milk, right? You ever, 
You ever been around a new... I, I had to babysit one time. And um, how did I say this in the right way? And the milk truck was gone. The milk truck had to be at a meeting. And the meeting ran on, long, right? And the milk lady wasn't present. So I had this baby that wanted to drink milk, but no milk was present, right? He tried to nurse up on me. I'm like, that ain't going to work. <laughs> so the issue was, we, we, we got to find some milk. I'm thinking, is it wrong to give a newborn baby cow milk? I'm just thinking, what do I do here? I, 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 I could put Pepsi in a bottle. You know, I'm thinking all this kind of stuff. I'm the, I'm the kind of parent, though, they, my kids say, can I have an Mountain Dew? I don't care. I'm not a mom. I could care less. I, I've been putting things in your mouth, so drink whatever you want. I don't, don't care. don't matter to me. But this, the whole idea here is babies desire milk. If milk isn't present, that's where I was going with this story. If milk isn't present, you got a baby that's upset, man, because they desire something that isn't, right? So there's got to be this thing in you that says, I, you know, I'm, I need that truth in me that I might grow. And, and I can't get you to understand that growing means increase and beauty and fruit. And everything you were created for is in you as you grow. Everybody get that? You ought to be number one priority, Lord, I love you. Number two priority, Lord, I gotta grow in you. I, I've got to grow in you, I've got to. Well, how do I grow? Desire the word, right? So you can put it in your car, you can get it on your smartphone, you can whatever, just, just try it. Just try, it's really available, you know what I mean? Sometimes we're, I mean just say it, the word of God in your life will change all of your priorities. If indeed you've tasted that the Lord is gracious, meaning if you know God's good, and you know he's got good stuff for you, then why wouldn't you want to grow? Why wouldn't you want more milk? Why don't you want the good stuff God has to give you? Why don't you want more truth? Why don't you want to grow up? Why don't you want to be everything God wants you to be, right? If you've tasted a little, then certainly a God has so much more, right? You all hear me? You catch it? Am I beating you too much? Are you good? All right. Coming to him as a living stone. Did I read that wrong? Coming to... Coming to him as to a living stone. Well, the Lord is a living stone, right? It goes on here to compare us to being living stones or to talk to us about being a living stone. I just assume that you realize the Lord is, is a living stone. You can build everything on this stone that's alive. That makes it you, he, he's every, everything you ought to be building, it should be built on him, Right? Rejected by men. He was rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious. I like to turn those verses around in first the service. I kind of did. The same thing's true about you. You're a living stone. You should be understanding you could be rejected by men. You, you were chosen by God and precious. That makes sense? But we're talking here about Jesus in this verse. Coming to him, the living stone, being built on a living stone. Chosen by God to be that one we build our life on, right? You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house. Who's he talking to? The church. You also. Jesus, a living stone, being built on him. You also are living stones. Being built up a spiritual house. God wants you to build up. I always think about bricks and a wall. I, I just always have thought about when you think, you know, stone. In the day, they didn't make a, 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 a consistent size brick. That makes sense? They took stones and they built with them, right? So, and what was unique about that and what's really kind of fun is every stone had a different shape and a different quality and a different size and a different texture. And So it kind of represents us better than a brick because a brick seems like it's just so... What's the right word? Uniform, that's right. Uniform, right? But just for, for us, this whole idea that a brick is in a wall, right? It has to sit on something. The scripture teaches us, you know, the cornerstone that we get, everything gets built on is Jesus. 
But in a brick wall, there's probably two bricks below a brick. If you're this brick, there's probably, you ought to have two bricks below you that you kind of, that support you. There ought to be two bricks beside you. Two people that are your buddies that, that you're interacting with. And, and over time, there ought to be able to be at least two bricks built on you. Right? And over time, more bricks built on that, and more bricks built on that, and more bricks built on it, right? So God is trying to say to us, though, that we're these living stones, that, that we're being built up in this spiritual house, and there ought to be a building, a growing, a, 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 that you might grow thereby, is what the one verse says, but that the spiritual house might grow by all these living stones being built together in this beautiful spiritual thing called a church. It's amazing. Right? It's amazing. I uh, was talking to a man, like an apostle man one time, and said, hey, what do you do with people? What do you do with, just asking a smart guy, pastor a long time, what do you do with people that come to church, don't want any relationship, they want to kind of come and go, they, they just want to come hear something, you know, whatever, but they just don't want to get built into the wall. You know, he said, throw them a biscuit. I went, he said, your job is to feed them. So if they come, they don't, just keep feeding them biscuits. Just keep, keep giving them the bread. Just keep giving them bread. Just keep giving them bread. But the desire the Lord has in these verses is we're built together as living stone. That there's a very lively, at least we're that for sure, right? You come around here, we're a lively bunch. I absolutely love that we're a lively bunch, you know. Uh, I could say some. There's a man in church today that uh, he, he goes to a, uh, I'm going to get in trouble. Maybe I should back out of this story. Uh, he goes to a denominational church that, and he usually sleeps all the way through church. Right? And he came to church today, somebody's dad, and, and he said, my dad didn't fall asleep in church today at all. He said, it's like the first time in forever. I said, well, we're a lively bunch, right? So you also, as living stone, being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. You understand, you understand a priesthood? A priest is someone that stands between the lost or the broken and God, right? So God has called us to be now, in the church, let me just do this. In the church, there's no superstars in the body of Christ, right? We called Travis our superstar, but outside of Travis, right, there's no superstars in the body of Christ. We're all, listen, the pastor is not greater than any other gifting in this church. No. I have a responsibility to lead a church. Woo! You guys are easy. You guys are great. You guys are wonderful. Love, love, love where God put me. It's amazing. I wouldn't want to go to another church for nothing. Have I had opportunities to go other places? You've got to be kidding me, man. When you're on the greatest, when you are the great kid of coach the greatest team in the history of the world, you don't want to go to another team. Right? You stay with the with the winners, man. You stay there. In any event, I don't know where I was going. Uh it, we're not sleeping. We're, we're, we're living. Thank God for you just the way you are. She wears her sunglasses on top of her head. She's got eyes on top of her head. I'm, I'm just pointing silly stuff out, right? Julie will not talk to you unless you talk to her. Right? Love Julie. Absolutely love Julie. Dustin is a stud, man. That dude right there is a stud. He, he got that shirt on right there, but if he were to flex, he'd rip that thing out, man. I'm just telling you. I didn't know you were a councilman in St. Paris. Yeah! That's exciting! Poor guy. Hey, you're hanging around with an exciting bunch of people here. They love the Lord. Does that make sense? And God's trying to build us. God's trying to just work us together. It's a beautiful thing when we support each other and we love each other. And it's alive and beautiful and wonderful, right? You're a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Now, what's a sacrifice? Sacrifices, what? Um, the... 
the killing of something, the, the giving up of something, that's better. The giving up of something for something needed or greater, right? So, God, God built us together, right? We're a holy priesthood. He's trying to get us to understand we're supposed to give up these spiritual, we're supposed to lay ourselves down. Right? Lay myself down. Hey, but God's calling me to lift my hands up, lay my whole life down. My whole life down. That's what I see in that. Before you, I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down. My whole life down. Before you, right? Isn't that what that verse is saying? God, I lift up my voice, lift up my hand, lift up my life, Lord, lay my whole life down. Right? That's what that's trying to say. That it might be acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay aside, lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. So, I... I had this big rock at home. I should have brought it in. There's a, hey, there's a great big, well, in this building, right out here in the corner of this building, right as we got the door, there's some big stones. Hey, everything is built on that stone. Jesus is what we're building on, right? We're building on him. There's no, he, he he's what we build our lives on, right? He just, and everybody who builds on him will not be put to shame. It isn't that you won't have some hard knocks in your life. Jesus, you know, we taught Wednesday night on Jesus going to the cross. They shoved that crown of thorns on his head, mocking him, saying, King of the Jews. They spit on him. They said all kinds of stuff. You know, they, they beat him. They All kinds of awful evil. Were they shaming him? Well, in the moment, that was, you know, they were putting him through it all. But what name is greater than every other name? There might be moments where you're going through hard stuff. But what he's saying is if you build your house on this stone, hey, in the end, <laughs> you got it made. In the end, there won't be any shame in that. In the end, all the people who doubt you or all the people who make fun of you or all the people that are against you, hey, they'll realize you were right, right? There won't be any shame for those of us that are in Christ Jesus, right? Listen, I built my house upon this cornerstone, and someday, everything I ever... In fact, I've said this, five seconds into being in heaven, five seconds in heaven, everything you went through on earth be worth it all, right? You take your first 360 in heaven, right? You take your first turn around in a circle. I, uh, I was at a Newsboys concert at Cedarville University, years ago and uh, never had anything like it Every, it was just kind of a worship thing and the newsboys were just fantastic the bass guitar was so amazing underneath the pews man your, your, pant, your pant cuffs were boom, boom, boom. you know it was like a heart boom, boom, boom. and everybody was just doing this you know and I, I forget uh, something about a throne I forget the song I, I don't remember it but there was a they put a big throne up on the and then everybody, and then they turned on every bright light in that place, and they started, they threw gold glitter out. And all of a sudden, gold glitter started falling from the ceiling. There's a throne up there. Everybody's got their hands up. The, the volume, the intensity of worship went from here to, whoa, through the roof, you know. Because all of a sudden, in that moment, there was just a moment there where it felt like, all these worshipers together, the throne of God, all this gold coming down, bright light. And all of a sudden, there, everybody in that room thought the same thought. This is what heaven's going to be like. And the worship just went, whoo. I mean, on, uh, you know, they claim, especially for women, if there's a motion connected with an event, you remember it forever. They say about men, men don't remember stuff 
because they just don't care. Basically, they don't have much emotion on stuff, right? So women remember stuff because there's emotion with it, right? So, and I don't have, I'm just a typical man. I don't remember a lot of stuff because there's not always emotion in stuff, you know what I mean? And, uh, but in this moment, something burned in me. And every time I think about All the stuff in this world just it just goes in a in a trumpet blast in a twinkling of an eye. All of the brokenness, hey, just gets replaced by glory. That's the only thing you say. By glory. And all of a sudden we stand in the presence of God forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Right? So that's what this verse is about. Build your life on Jesus, the cornerstone. And, and you know what? you got nothing to worry about. You absolutely have nothing to worry about. No matter how bad life goes, don't matter how much you mess up in this world, if you build your life on Jesus Christ, in the end, it's going to be glory, man. It's going to be glorious, right? Therefore, to you who believe, He is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Has become the chief corner. The stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. He is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. It's this idea for disobedient people. Hey, you rejected. You rejected what you could build your, build your life on. You rejected all the good that God had. You rejected, you know, it, it's really sad that for those who believe, he's precious, he's wonderful, I want to build my life on that. But for those who don't believe, those that are disobedient, he's still the cornerstone. You could be building your life on him. I watch a lot of young people pursue things, especially in our culture right now, they, they're pursuing things that you can't build anything on that. Right? But if you build your life on Jesus, hey, you're going to have a life built that's beautiful, that's amazing. That's wonderful. You ought to try. You ought to try every one of you. Say, Lord, I'm going to build my life. I'm going to get in the Word. I'm going to grow thereby. I'm going to build my life on Jesus. I'm not going to let it get. I'm not going to be disobedient to nothing. Because if I reject Him, I'm building on the wrong thing. A stone of stumbling. All of a sudden, the chief cornerstone becomes a, sto a stumble. All of a sudden, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to deal with that. You know, I, I've seen people, I, I see it all the time, it happens to me sometimes. You mean good, God means good for people, but somehow they turn that into God bad. God, God doesn't care. What do you mean God doesn't care? So often what God is working in the lives of people to draw them close to him, they'll turn that around in their mind and say, well, God doesn't care about me or he's unfair. So, if you reject him, this, he's a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Now, appointments. Do you realize you have appointments? I was appointed to the word of God. I have in my life appointments. I just dealt with it over the summer. This idea that the, in, in just praying about what to do. I, I don't know. I have this burden the Lord gave me a long time ago for ministry in Peru. There have been a lot of people in our church going to Peru. I have a heart for that. I have a daughter that lives there. Um, the Lord told me I'd work there the rest of my life. Sometimes I pray about Peru. Lord, what do you want me to do in Peru? The Lord spoke to me about going into this one jungle village on a river God has called us to and build a new building. And I knew God was doing that. I began to talk about it. People began to sign up to go on this Peru trip. And my knees just go. Boosh. And I just, in the whole thing, I just had to say, Lord, there's an appointment. God, you spoke to me about an appointment. I, uh, then I, I do this thing where I go, you know, how your brain works, how your brain can really get you. Well, 
maybe there's an appointment, but it's really for somebody else. And I said, well, God, why didn't you speak to them? Or God, why did you speak to me and not tell me to tell them? You know what I mean? So God, this appointment was for me. So Lord, I know you'll be, I know you'll be enough. God, you made an appointment. There's kind of all kinds of distractions come to try to keep you from the appointment God wants you to be at. Does that make sense? Dr. Chad was in here in the first service, and people make appointments to see him, right? And I said, Chad, how do you feel when people don't show up for their appointment? He said, it's very discouraging. I feel like I can help them. And I'm thinking, well, God's just saying, if God has these appointments to which you were appointed, this is talking about people stumbling and not getting to the appointment, right? Right? If God has an appointment for you, God has things He wants you to do. God, there's moments in your life God wants you to be there. God wants to do amazing things. There's things God wants you to do, and you're missing an appointment. The enemy will do anything and everything to cause you to miss that appointment. But for me, I knew, wait a minute, Lord, you spoke to me. i got to make this point. Even if I'm the weakest person on the trip, I know i got an appointment. By golly, the word showed up. Just saying, do you understand that? For people that are disobedient, it's saying here, hey, being disobedient, to which also they were appointed. They were appointed to the word of God, hey, because God had things for them to do and be. And they're missing these appointments. Does that make sense? If you're disobedient, you're going to miss appointments. If you get distracted, you're going to miss appointments. If God is at first, or you, hey, you're not living in the truth. Or you're not recognizing the appointment God has for you. Sometimes it's other things get more important. Does that make sense? You ever missed appointments? You ever just forget? Of course you have, right? Not me. I've never forgot anything in my whole life. Kidding. But you understand? You, the people, even these people that are not serving the Lord are missing things that were appointed to them. That says to us believers, there's appointments, right? So we don't want to miss appointments. God who is good, if, I miss, if I'm having a meeting with the Lord, there's some appointment with the Lord, the God that is good is going to give me at this appointment, going to give me good. I... I, I, I uh, have trouble sometimes, and I people I think are deceived sometimes. The the more I go in God's direction, the more good God piles on my life. Right? The more goodness I have surround me, the more I am so blessed as a pastor. I get all all you guys are here, man. Goodness, and more people come. <laughs> Lord, you're good. Excited, right? I didn't get out there today, but somebody reported the chocolate chip cookies were amazing, right? You make an appointment, he did. At the, when you make an appointment at church, you're going to show up, there's going to be some cookies here. Gonna be, you don't want to miss the appointment. I can't tell you how many times that I wanted, before I pastored, I wanted to get out of church. I had excuses to get out of church, and I made myself go, and that very, that very Sunday... The Lord had something to say to me. I, I, I preached all these years, preached all these years, and I preach a sermon, and I go away sometimes, and I say, I, I, when I'm preaching, I'm not shotgun preaching. I'm not aiming any, I'm just preaching what the Lord, I'm, if you're here and I hit you with a bullet, it's, I, I'm not aiming, right? I'm just preaching what the Lord gives me, right? But I walk out of here sometimes saying, man, that, that was, that's, you know, somebody, this person should have heard that. And then I realized, that person wasn't here today. Missed an appointment. But God has these appointments for us, you understand that? And if we're disobedient, we miss appointments. But you're a chosen generation. That is amazing. God chose us. 
hey, we might be, we might, just to put this, when, when Peter wrote this, he didn't realize there'd be a generation like ours that might be the last generation. I don't, Bill, I, and, and, and I could be totally off and totally wrong. I believe the Lord's coming pretty soon. I believe, hey, that there won't be another pastor at this church until the tribulation in which my wife will pastor here, right? That's a joke, anybody. I believe that this is the generation the Lord's coming. I believe that with all my heart. This is the generation the Lord's coming. We're chosen. That, that, that phrase that's been there for centuries ought to be more powerful to us than any... This is the choke. This is it, man. If we do our work, we finish well. If we don't do our work and miss some appointments, then what have we done? You know? A royal priesthood. You guys are royalty. Prince John. Prince John Omnis in the building. Prince Tim Tester royalties in the building. Bruce Blevins is in the building. Right? Bailey's in the building. Dan Cruz is in the building. You know, when you get to heaven, you're going to get a crown. You're going to rule and reign over the earth for a thousand years. Royal priest, a holy nation. God picked us to be holy, be his special people. His own special people. I mean, do it this way. His own special ed people. Right? Uh, his own. His own. What's that? I am his own special person. Yeah! Carl, you're his own special ed person. You are. Right? I'm playing around, but isn't that amazing? Hey, his own. I am his own. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I can tell you this story. I had a boy that was adopted uh, into our home. And he was in a hard situation for the first 10 years of his life. And uh, he came to church, and at one point, a prophet got him and began to speak to him prophetically over his life. And the prophet said to him, I saw you crying out in a dark place. And I pulled you out of that dark place and put you in a place of light. And I can't read this verse. I mean, there's all kinds of descriptive. This is this amazing verse about what God, who God, how God sees us and who we are to him. And, and what he, he sees us as great and magnificent royalty and amazing. And, he, and it says, and you ought to be lifting up praises for the, the one who pulled you out of that dark place and put you in this marvelous light. Right? But a prophet spoke that over one of the boys. God saw you crying out, and he pulled you out of that dark place, and he put you in a place of light. Think about that. And that applies to every single one of us here that know the Lord, right? God pulled us out of some dark place to put us in some place where there's amazing light. Right? Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. That Pentecostal church I grew up in, they'd be shouting right now. I'm just telling you. You guys just aren't there yet, are you? Just not. Right? You want, you weren't, one time you were not his people. Hey, but he wretched into that darkness. You 
And you became people of God who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You know mercy, the word mercy? Mercy means you didn't get what you deserved. Right? So now you, you know what? You're not going to get what you just, God pulled you out of that dark place and now you're not going to get what you deserve. Amazing. You know, I, uh, we were talking about Jesus and him going to the cross on Wednesday night and, and uh, I, I went to uh, the Passion of the Christ movie the very first day it was out. Scott Mendenhall and I went. We wanted to be the first ones there because we knew there'd be a lot of talk about it and a whole bunch of things. And I'm telling you, again, I don't have a lot of up and down emotion, but I had emotion in this movie. They put him to that whipping post and they begin to just thrash him, man. And, thrash. and I just begin to do this and people are openly bawling, sobbing in this movie theater. And I'm doing this and I'm trying to just peek through my fingers and then close up the cracks in my fingers so I can't see, you know what I mean? And they just go on and on and on and on. They hit him 39 times because they said 40 times would kill a man. So they stopped just short, one stripe short of, of what they thought would kill a man. And then I look at this verse. And you were once a people. You were once not a people, but now you're a people of God. I was once a person, hey, that someday I was going to take a beating for my sin. That was going to be me. But then I always have this recollection of, this understanding of, but no, listen, I, but now I've obtained mercy. Now, all of a sudden, somebody else took my beating. Somebody else took the punishment for my sin. Now I'm a child of God and I have mercy that I don't deserve. He took it for me. I'm so thankful for that. Are you on the stairs waiting on me? Come on, sis. I would go on. There's 25 verses. I was trying to get 25 verses in. <laughs> I think we jump subjects here. The best verses are still in this chapter, John. But Peter's coming after us. Hey, he's coming after us. Say, hey, throw that stuff away. You don't need. Hey, throw that away. You don't need that. And be the child of God you're supposed to be. Be that person that's royalty. Be that person that is chosen by God. You don't need that trash in your life. You don't need that junk no more. You don't need to think that way anymore. Be. And let the word of God let you grow. And grow. And, grow, and let truth replace all those lies and let truth what's truth do set you free you can be changed and grow in Jesus name you have mercy because he gave you mercy you have eternal life because he gave you eternal life. I've been adopted into a new family. And I can no longer live in the old one. Or be a product of my old life. Right? And Peter's coming at us saying, hey, the word of God will cause you to grow like a little baby grows when he gets good milk. Come on grow come on be royal be chosen be special Peter in wearing us out a little bit also tells us how important we are to God now, I don't know about you but I don't want to disappoint especially over the foolish things my fleshly man might want to chase after, right? So, Father, we thank you for time today.
could today be the day for some who say, I'm done. I'm done with that old guy. I see, Lord, you've called me to this royal priesthood. You've called me to be a, a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You've called me to walk in truth and walk in your word that I might grow and be fruitful. You've made appointments for me. You called me a living stone to be built into a living house. And you made appointments for me, Lord, that I look forward to in the future. Too much, Lord. Too much, Lord, to turn back now. Too much ahead, Lord. Too much exciting thing, God, in the, the calling and the purpose you have for our lives for us to even play with the world. Think about the world. Worry about the world. So help us, Lord, to live where you want us to live. Lord, before church today, you allowed an eagle to circle over our parking lot. And they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and walk and not faint. That is for the people of God. So Lord, we, we pray today that we would lay everything aside and live in the calling, the beautiful, wonderful, amazing calling in which God is calling us. We give you thanks today. We give you praise today. Thank you, Lord, that you've extended to every one of us mercy. May we glorify you, Lord, by giving you all that we are. We give you praise this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. We love you. Come back and see us now. We'll be here next week. We plan to be here next week, Lord willing, for maybe the last Sunday service. If you know your calendar.